Hey, brethren. Hello, hello, hello. I had a good Sabbath and I was able to get some rest yesterday and trim the hair so I could get the hair back to where it needs to be. I need to trim it some more. Um, and it's just like cutting all the dead ends off, not just the hair, the dead ends of life, the toxicity, just everything that everyone's trying, right? Trying on our anointing. It's just nice when you can get away from it. That's that's what I have to say. When you can just escape it, okay? <laughs> because it is a depression. They really lower your, your self-worth in, in offices and during work schedules. They don't understand life as a whole any longer. Um, they just are becoming the masses and they want everybody to fall in line. But we want the sunshine, we want the light, and we want truth of the Most High. So I just try to leave it there in the office. Okay, so today, for instance, I was seeing these numbers this way. So all the numbers, three, two. So even when I'm seeing it in a phone number that I dial, when I see it in a word, anything that I see with a number, it's just that's the time the Most High is like, reflect upon me. So the word he was giving me today was abundance. And, uh, let's see here, Hebrew H213, so that's my extension number at work in this project that I'm on right now, this, this work for a minute. And you know, it says to press, to be close, to labor, narrow. That's my extension they gave me. That's a number I see every day. So it's like, it's keeping me close and understanding of what I'm doing here, the narrow path, pressing in, not, you know worrying so much just pressing in and doing what I have to do at the moment even though some days are a little tougher uh, so today we're going to talk about you see the title there um, the word carelessness within that title I want to talk about carelessness because it's a disregard for a person who are in Christ you know whether it be friendship relationships business partners and those we see as associates occasionally even in traffic and neighbors for some reason the majority of people they just don't care they don't care for our thoughts as a chosen as as children of the most high they don't care about our thoughts our feelings our discerning of judgment of how much we try to keep peace and stay away from toxicity like the judgment that can come if we don't re repent the judgment that can come from doing something inappropriate or not understanding spiritually any kind of judgment or not uh, gathering our thoughts and being able to share it with someone. And they're stifling our growth. Their darkness and their toxicity just does not want you to do that. So with that being said, the carelessness. So when I spoke before about narcissists, you know, the narcissism, like I said, the pieces and parts of the, of the devil, of the enemy, um, Satan, his narcissism, what it is, is it's like a fungus, you know, like an algae, not a healthy algae. It's like a fungus that you see in a creek or a, a lake that's just been sitting there rotting and the mud is just sitting there rotting and then birds that come by and um, they mess up, you know, from their feces and things like that. It's like that kind of algae and fungus. And the only way to cleanse that out of the spirit is Christ walking only Christ's walk, his actual walk to cleanse the vessels only way for that narcissism to go away. Now the demon part affects the spirit, right? But the narcissist is the person that's the self altered ego, the narcissistic traits whether it be your codependent, whether it be you had parents that were, no matter what the situation was, that is the soul that is attacked. So your spirit's attacked by, narciss by the narcissism demon. Your soul is attacked by the spirits before they're demons. So these are, so spirit, they're spirits. And then there are serious demons like, you know, deity demons and things like that. Um, and so there's different levels and different grades of understanding with that narcissistic tendency. Then you have the narcissistic tendency that is a um, description of 
the person not being able to figure out who they are. They could also have identity uh, disorder, which I just, I don't like to call anything a disorder, put it in a box, whatever. Everything is spiritual in my mind. It just really is. Everything's just spiritual. It's coming down to everything is spiritual. I don't care what you have going on with your body, whether it be bacteria, it's spiritual because if it's chemicals, the chemicals come from what this wicked elites do. If it comes from the soil because of what they did to it, okay? Not just Cain when he killed his brother, but I'm talking about the soil they mess up, the GMOs. If it's something in your family, hereditary-wise, it's ancestral, it's spiritual. If it's from birth and it's physical, it's from what you ate or what you took in, the spiritual practices, all the idolatry, everything is spiritual in the end. So um, the only way to, to deal with this is to walk as Christ. And when Mashiach walked, it's like he was able to see if there was a demon or a, a wicked spirit because really what it comes down to is being cleansed and being uncleansed. So if you're cleansed, then you don't have that problem. I see a squirrel that's, hi, baby. <laughs> squirrel trying to talk to me. Look at me. I don't have any Fritos today. The birds like the Fritos, the hawks and things, but um, the squirrels like to, to get peanuts or like cashews or just seeds and things from me or just look at me and laugh when I'm not feeling like all that happy and that has happened I have pictures of it crying I was crying in the car and a squirrel came up and just did all these looks with uh looked at me and then went into the tree went into the bush came back out went like this you know like a Willy Wonka squirrel kind of it was just hilarious like the most I sent this squirrel to me so animals are really coming around this is why I'm saying we are trying to better our life. We're trying to excel in truth. We're trying to have discernment. We're trying to feel cleansed. We're trying to be happy as best as we can in this situation of this world and this society and the beast system and the matrix and everything else, right? And then you have people that just want to cause toxicity. They do, they're, they're, they're just, they hate. They hate your glow. They hate your glow, they hate it. They absolutely hate your glow. I am a little bit tired, so excuse me. I am a little bit sleepy. I really still didn't get enough rest and slept over in the forest area or out actually towards the airport, but the day before I was in the forest. Um, so it's like they just hate, they hate, they hate that we get excited about little things, that we get happy, that we enjoy solitude. I, you can look in someone's eyes now and you can just see, you can see like the death, like they just are hollow, like there's just no life form there. And what I don't like is when we as the most high children, our eyes like see that we, I get tired. I'm just so sleepy and I'm going to take a nap right after this video. And when I'm, I'm sleepy, it draws my eyes out. It just draws them out. And when I'm awake and alert, then it's like light and happiness. So you know, we really, this is a time, and I'm telling you, even in my life, and just let me know, you guys comment, just let me know, you know, it's a time where there's certain scriptures that I'm reading, and I just keep seeing the most I say, you know what, it's like you're separate from every, you're separating, I'm separating you, I'm separating you, and that word cannot be closer to, to what's really going on in my life with separations, you know, family's going to separate friends, it's relationships, friendships, all kinds of things are, are going to have with separating. And it really is just, you just don't want to be disrespected. There's agony. There's actual agony that I was looking up. There's actual agony. Um, and what we go through, there's agony, you know, agony is, it's not shame, but agony is like regret, you know, it's, um, withdrawing. Agony is to go through pain. So Yahusha went through pain. And I was reading where the most high was giving me Luke chapter 22. That's the one that I, I left out of here. Luke chapter 22. And Luke 22 was speaking of. Uh, how in the area of the Garden of Gethsemane, 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 
where Yahushua was tormented, like when he was taken away, right? Not when he saw um, Pontius Pilate, but when he was taken away, when the guards took him away. It's like Judas, Judas was the thorn in his side, you know? And he went through this pain. He went through this agony. It was agonizing. And yet he knew what, what was going to happen later. He could see because he knew what his life purpose was. He could see into the distant future. Oh, this is what, I, I, you know, I'm going to go through this. However, he didn't know exactly how his flesh would feel when, being sh when he, they were striking him. He wouldn't know exactly what was going on because at that time coming from light as the most high and, and being here on earth as Yahusha and having that light, he was experiencing spirit, but being here human. And I know Yahu could have said, you know, yeah, this this what this is really what it's gonna feel like. But the experience is is a different journey. It's something we all have to go through walking as Christ as Yahusha. And it's the same thing we're experiencing: the agony and disappointment of those disrespecting us, those being careless with our heart, careless with our time, careless with our emotions, careless with our thoughts careless with our direction and purpose, careless with any abundance that we would like to try to have, careless with just our friendships. They're careless with us. They're careless with our flesh. They're careless with our spirit. They're careless with our, our soul. They're careless with our mind. They're careless with us. That's exactly what the elites are doing, what the wicked are doing. This government, all the society, the socialism, everything going on is carelessness. And we are going through the agony just like in Luke 22, with Yahusha being Mashiach, walking as king, and yet he was going through agony. He was being tormented by what Judas was setting up and wanting to do because the devil just came into him and just destroyed all of Judas' temple. So the agony and the carelessness equals hardship. It equals um, just a feeling of oppression and pulling ourselves out of that and staying away from the toxicity is not easy. And it, it takes, it takes genuine trust in the most high faith and belief that Yahushua, we can walk as him and our vessels can feel cleansed every day that we can rest in him that we can find delight in Yahuwah, that we can find him as our hiding place, you know, that we can find him and rest ourselves upon that tree of life, that living bread, that living water that we receive. It's just something that just truly, truly comforts me. And I hope it comforts you just knowing that. At some point, this agony will stop. They just don't want to see us move forward. So we have to cast away all of that pain, the agony, the torment, and keep it away from us. Luke 22. All right, you guys. So, um, if you'd like to get in touch with me, I'll leave my email down below and I will move on to the up next upload um, should come out. I actually think I'm going to do two, uh, three, I'm going to try to do three videos before tomorrow a.m. I'm working on a second project, a few income businesses, uh, referral services I talked about and so forth. So I have to move on and do those as well. So thank you so much for joining me, you guys. I love you all with the love of Christ. Hallelujah. Yahuwah, we love you, Abba. We love you, Father. We thank you for this day. All right, you guys. Um, and thank you so much. Let's rise up and keep keep moving forward in our purpose and calling and receive that anointing of Holy Spirit every moment that we are breathing. All right. I'm going to go ahead and take my nap. I need to rest my eyes. All right, you guys. Shalom.